Hey professionals, imagine having the power to transfer files to a remote editor instantly without ever needing to share a clunky link or waiting for downloads. And here's the kicker, it works universally. I'm a Mac editor and my assistant uses Windows and we're continents apart. And this large distance is actually advantage. Picture this, you wrap up for your day, you've done all your filming, done some editing, and you head to bed. Meanwhile, halfway across the world, your assistant editor picks up right where you left off. By the time your alarm buzzes in the morning, your project is not just waiting for you, it's done. This simple trick has basically allowed me to deliver videos twice as quickly, and for a lot of clients, they're either looking for something that's cheap, easy or quick. And by being quick, I don't have to lower my prices and still have this competitive advantage. Here in this video, I'm going to be showing you my preferred method for creating a remote editor collaboration sync system, I guess you could say. So naturally the first question that comes up is what's the best cloud software to set up these sync systems? And I've tested them all. I've tested everything from OneDrive to Google Drive to P Cloud to Blackmagic Cloud. I even at one point tried to create uh, my own little NAS server over here to try and do some remote cloud collaborations and that did not work at all. And hands down, my favorite solution has been a combination of using Google Drive with Blackmagic Cloud. The system's really simple, but we use Google Drive for sharing all the assets within a project. So your videos, your music, your graphics, all your templates as well. And then we use Blackmagic Cloud to sync our project files. We could be using Blackmagic Cloud as they do offer a cloud collaboration service where it's got this really cool functionality of auto proxying files and sending them across. In the end, I just didn't end up using it because from what I could tell, you have to have the project file open for the sync to start happening. And I want these syncs to be happening all the time so that when I do want to start working on it, it's ready to go instantly. Google Drive just runs in the background and gets it done. But we do want to use Blackmagic for the project files because just specifically, it's really good at keeping a secure database of them. And there are some volatilities we'll need to talk about. It's a great safety net to be able to have a dedicated Blackmagic software handling the Blackmagic project files. And just another way to really illustrate how big this point is, is we can compare what us Blackmagic users with the cloud get to use versus Adobe. If you want to do any sort of project file sharing with the Adobe software, you end up having to go project file name, version one, then you send it across to the editor. Then the editor opens it up and they instantly have to resave it as project file name, version two. And if they forget to do it or they keep it as version one, They'll send that back across. And then if you accidentally open up your old project instead of the new project, all of a sudden it gets really tricky to go, which project file am I working on? And it gets a mess really quickly. With the Blackmagic Cloud system, I can basically just text my editor, hey, work on this video, and they open it up and it's the newest one. We don't do any version numbering. It's all automatically backed up and saved to Blackmagic Cloud. And best of all, they do have a lot of backup systems in place. So if anyone was to ruin anything or wreck everything, you can go back to an older version. You can set them up in the settings pretty easily. So that's pretty much a system. Assets shared through Google Drive, Blackmagic Cloud handles the project files. So now let's go into setting up this Cloud Sync system. And the first thing we're gonna do is get the Asset Sync system set up. So we're gonna be using Google Drive in this case. And the first thing we need to do is go and download it. So when it comes to choosing a plan with Google Drive, if you're just starting out, I'd recommend getting the 200 gigabyte option. Generally speaking with our sync folder systems, we're not usually going over about 80 or 90 gigs, but sometimes we do. In this case, it's just better to not have to deal with the hassle. Just pay the extra two bucks a month and don't even think about it. Once you've picked your plan and you've purchased it, you'll need to download the desktop client, which looks like this. What happens when we use the desktop client is it allows us to create folders on our project that are linked directly to our Google Drive. So I'm gonna be showing this on Mac. It's pretty much the exact same for Windows, but when you download Google Drive, you should get this external storage location called Google Drive. This is pretty much your cloud storage center, but in your Finder or Windows Explorer experience. So what you wanna do is click inside My Drive, and then you wanna go and create a new folder, and we're just going to call this Sync Folder. Now this here, this folder is going to be the folder that you and your editor sync across to each other. So any asset I drag into here automatically gets sent across to the editor. And then when they do the same setup on their side, any asset they drag into this folder will be sent across to me. 
So what I like to do when we have the sync folder set up is I like to create a new folder for each project. I like serial numbering all my projects because it makes it really easy. So if I'm doing a personal video for myself, my name's Orson Lord, so my client code is OL. So this is project 0045 because this is the 45th lot of videos that I'm editing for myself. That's how this folder works. But to make it offline, if we just go back here, we can right click on this folder and we can check this available offline button. Now, I do not ever have to think about downloading anything again. Any new project file I create in here, any asset at all that I drag into this finder automatically gets uploaded to the cloud. And then when my assistant editor sets up the same Google Drive setup on their side, and again, they choose the available offline option, once it's up in the cloud, it'll automatically download to their side as well. Out of all the softwares we found, Google Drive has definitely seemed to have been the most reliable at getting this done correctly. When you're setting up these two-way sync systems, there is a lot of risk that something could corrupt or go wrong because there's a lot of communication going back and forth. And if these computers collide, things can happen. Google Drive just has been really good at not letting that happen as much as possible. But there is one story I will share at the end about some caution to be had. So the next thing we need to do is set up Blackmagic Cloud so we have a project file sync system. First thing you need to do is sign up to Blackmagic Cloud. Just head over to their website, click the little cloud icon and create an account. Creating the account is free. It's when we want to have our own dedicated project library that we have to start paying. So if you're the head of a company or head of production, you'll probably be the one who wants to own that project library and have control over it. So you'd be the one who ends up paying. Any of your freelancers or anyone you want to bring in, they don't have to pay for this license as well. It's just you. It's a really great system of having these subscriptions only being handled by the people who are handling the project. Let's talk about the plans you should be choosing with Blackmagic Cloud. The thing we want is the project library. If you're on a budget, you can actually just reduce the storage size to two gigabytes and add one project library, which will be two gigabytes. I have found this to be absolutely plenty when you're starting out because project files are quite minuscule in size. If you're getting bigger, you might just need to look at going to the 500 gigs and just using that by default. And generally speaking, I only use one project library. I know some people will set up a project library per client, and I think that's mainly used if that client's being involved directly in the edit as well. If the client isn't directly involved in the edit, you can just pretty much use one project library because the way they work is that when you set these project libraries up, this is where you store all your project files, you can't just give access to one project file. You just give people access to the entire library which is where how many you need comes into play. Since none of my clients actually access the edit directly themselves, they just go through the presentations feature to review everything, I only need the one project library. So once we've chosen our plan, we'll now need to open up good old DaVinci Resolve. If you're new to Blackmagic Cloud, you're probably used to having your local database when you're managing your project files. The way Cloud works is it's exactly the same, but you just click over here. It'll take a second to open the library up, and looks pretty much exactly the same. So this is my YouTube channels folder inside here in the projects. And yeah, this is basically how I store all of them. Now, when it comes to inviting someone over to be an editor on these projects as well, all you have to do is click on this little information icon, hit the share button here, and this will open up a browser. We just click the information icon again and hit share. You just enter the email address that your assistant editor sets up with their free Blackmagic Cloud account and they'll just get access to everything instantly. This is really good when you're having a lot of freelancers you work with on a regular basis. If you're working with someone who you're testing out, who's new, maybe you don't have trust with them yet, you might wanna set up a second database just for them to begin with, just to test the waters as they do get access to everything. It is one of the downsides of the system is you have to basically buy a new project library for every kind of controlled access that you want to give. But the benefit is though, once you've done that, you don't have to think about anything. I don't have to go and send across project name, version one across or anything like that. I literally just text my assistant editor can you work on OL underscore P0045 today? And they'll just get onto it. It's that easy. In saying all this, I wanna go through some experiences I've had as this is the best system I've definitely been able to create, but it's not without its flaws. So there's this thing I like to coin myself as the nuclear event where the Google Drive two-way sync system glitches out and 
starts deleting everything basically. This has happened twice, but I caught it once and was able to prevent it from happening and doing too much damage. But it did happen a second time where it did just take away everything. And essentially what's happened is for whatever reason with Mac, if its hard drives start getting filled up, it just starts deleting everything in the Google Drive folder. I have no idea what this is, but basically I just have to keep an eye on my Mac to make sure it's not filling up in the hard drives. If you use the DaVinci Resolve caching settings, you can fill up that hard drive in like a couple projects because it's rendering out these really high quality previews so that you get the seamless playback. So you're just gonna be really careful about that. So what I actually have done is I've designed a very specific workflow system so that these, even if this crash happens, nothing too damaging can actually ever happen. Let me just go through the workflow I like to use when I'm creating these systems. The first thing I do is I record all my content or someone else is recording it, I'll grab that. So I've got the raw video files. I'll then actually put them onto a local hard drive or a local solid state drive. And this is a backup of all of them. And then I will run that through Blackmagic Proxy. And what this is gonna do is just create a lot smaller video files that I can then actually put into the Google Drive sync folder. So I don't typically sync the raw video files because it just creates such a huge workload and delay between me and the editor receiving it. And at the end of the day, I'm still the one who's rendering the final quality. So I don't worry about giving them the raws, just giving them the proxies is plenty to work with. It also means that if the assistant editors you have don't have the most expensive computer, it's not going to be difficult for them to edit. It's not going to be too intense on their computer. Any of the B-roll, we just get the raw B-rolls and then put them in the B-roll folder as well in Google Drive. We don't worry about proxying them. And then once the video has been completely edited, rendered, exported, and we're done with it, I'll then take that folder and copy it across to that NAS setup you saw before so that I can have a cold storage. So I like to consider the Google Drive hot storage. It's risky, but useful. And the cold storage is a bit cumbersome, but it's safe. You know, things aren't going to break over time. And having a NAS setup has been really beneficial for that. So my NAS is set up so that everything gets stored into it. And then what I like to do is have it make a encrypted Google Drive backup so that if the office burnt down, I still have everything safe and secure in the cloud and encrypted so that hackers can't get into it. So I've given a pretty macro overview of everything related to this project. If you feel like I've missed anything or you're not sure about what I've talked about, feel free to leave a comment. I'll be happy to engage with them. But yeah, this is a real big heartache to create these systems and I hope this gives you some clear guidance on what's best for you. But apart from that, I really enjoyed making this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this and until next time, I'll catch you around.